China built a fully operational, permanently inhabited space station in under two years. Not a prototype, not a test lab, a complete orbital outpost with crew quarters, laboratories, robotic arms, cargo vehicles, and continuous human presence. And that timeline alone should immediately raise questions. When we think of space stations, the reference point is always the International Space Station, the largest, most complex structure ever assembled in orbit. The ISS took more than 13 years to build, beginning in 1998 and stretching into the early 2010s. It required over 40 assembly missions, dozens of spacewalks, and coordination between five space agencies across 15 countries. China's Tiangong Space Station, by contrast, went from its first core module launch in April 2021 to a fully assembled three-module configuration by November 2022. That's roughly 18 months. So, the real question is, how did China compress what took the ISS over a decade into a fraction of the time, and why did most of the world barely notice it happening? To understand Tiangong's speed, you have to rewind three decades, long before any module ever reached orbit. In 1992, China quietly approved something called Project 921, a long-term national plan for human spaceflight. This wasn't a vague ambition, it was a three-phase blueprint laid out from the beginning. Phase 1. Develop the ability to send humans into orbit independently. Phase 2. Master space operations, docking, spacewalks, long-duration missions. Phase 3. Build and operate a permanent space station. The station was never an afterthought. It was always the end goal. Phase 1 focused on two critical systems. The Long March 2F rocket, China's first human-rated launch vehicle, the Shenzhou spacecraft, a crew capsule designed for orbital missions. After years of testing, that first phase reached its defining moment in October 2003. Shenzhou 5 launched with Taikonaut Yang Liwei aboard, placing China into low Earth orbit under its own power. With that single mission, China became only the third nation in history, after the United States and the Soviet Union, to independently send a human into space. That flight wasn't just symbolic, it marked the completion of Phase 1, and more importantly, it unlocked the next step of the plan. Not to race headlines, not to chase prestige, but to methodically prepare for something much larger. Because Tiangong did not emerge suddenly in the 2020s, it was the final move in a sequence that began in 1992, patiently executed over 30 years. And once that context is clear, the speed of Tiangong's construction starts to look far less mysterious and far more deliberate. By the time Tiangong's final station modules were launched, China had already spent years practicing in orbit, deliberately, quietly, and out of the spotlight. The first major step came in September 2011 with the launch of Tiangong-1. Tiangong-1 wasn't meant to last forever. It wasn't designed to host continuous crews. It was a testbed, China's first true orbital laboratory. Over the next two years, Tiangong-1 was visited by multiple Shenzhou spacecraft, including Shenzhou-9 and Shenzhou-10. These missions weren't about spectacle, they were about fundamentals. Autonomous rendezvous, precision docking, life support reliability, short duration human habitation. Every successful docking removed uncertainty from future designs. Then, in 2016, China launched Tiangong-2. And this is where the approach became unmistakably strategic. Tiangong-2 supported longer crew stays, pushing endurance and habitability beyond earlier limits. But more importantly, it validated something the final space station would depend on completely, routine cargo resupply. That's where the Tianzhou spacecraft came in. With Tianzhou, China demonstrated automated cargo docking, on-orbit refueling closed-loop logistics, food, water, propellant, and waste. By the end of Tiangong-2's missions, China wasn't guessing how to run a space station. They had already rehearsed it. And this is where the contrast with the International Space Station becomes critical. The ISS was an extraordinary achievement, but many of its systems were tested live during assembly while astronauts were already on board. China took the opposite path. They tested first. They validated procedures early. They eliminated unknowns before committing to a permanent station. By 2016, Phase 2 of Project 921 was effectively complete, and the risk profile of Phase 3 had already been dramatically reduced. With operational experience locked in, China's next challenge wasn't how to build a station, it was how to build it fast. The answer came through infrastructure. First, China completed the Wenchang Space Launch Site, a coastal launch complex designed specifically for heavy lift rockets. 
Wenchang allowed launches directly over the ocean, enabling larger payloads and safer trajectories, something inland sites simply couldn't support. Then came the real turning point. In May 2020, China successfully flew the Long March 5B into orbit. This rocket changed everything. For the first time, China could launch single space station modules weighing more than 20 tons, fully assembled, fully pressurized, and flight ready. That capability defined the entire Tiangong construction strategy. Compare that to the ISS. ISS modules were smaller, lighter, more numerous. They required astronauts to connect cables, install plumbing, assemble trusses, perform hundreds of hours of spacewalks. China deliberately avoided that complexity. Instead, they chose fewer modules, heavier modules, pre-assembled on the ground, autonomously docked in orbit. No prolonged EVA construction marathons, no in-orbit wiring labyrinths. Once a Tiangong module reached space, it arrived already functional, and when combined with robotic arms and automated docking systems, assembly became a matter of positioning, not construction. By the time the first core module launched in 2021, every major variable had already been solved. Crew operations, cargo logistics, docking reliability, heavy lift launch capacity. Which is why what came next would look so sudden. Everything we've talked about so far, the planning, the test stations, the infrastructure, only matters if it actually works in orbit. That moment came in April 2021. On April 29th, China launched the Tianhe core module atop a Long March 5B rocket. Tianhe weighs about 22.5 tons, and it wasn't a placeholder. It arrived with full life support systems, propulsion for station keeping and reboosts, crew quarters for three Taikonauts, robotic arm capability, primary docking ports for crew, cargo, and future modules. This wasn't a skeleton waiting to be filled in later, this was a functional space station from day one. And within weeks, crews began arriving. In June 2021, Shenzhou 12 carried three Taikonauts to Tianhe for China's first long-duration stay aboard the new station. They didn't just live there, they activated life support systems, conducted multiple extravehicular activities using China's Fijian EVA suits, installed handrails, foot restraints, and external equipment, verified that Tianhe could support sustained human operations. Then came Shenzhou 13 in October 2021. This mission stayed six months, setting new Chinese endurance records and confirming something critical. Tianhe wasn't experimental anymore. It was stable, it was livable, and it was ready to grow. That growth came fast. On July 24, 2022, China launched the Wentian Laboratory Module. Wentian added a completely new layer of capability, a dedicated EVA airlock, eliminating reliance on the core module for spacewalks, backup life support and avionics, increasing redundancy, additional crew berths, allowing up to six people during crew handovers, massive deployable solar arrays, dramatically boosting available power. For a brief period, Wentian docked at the forward port of Tianhe, not where it would stay. Using robotic arms, it was later relocated to its permanent starboard position, a maneuver performed without astronauts manually assembling anything in open space. Then, just three months later, the final major piece arrived. On October 31, 2022, China launched the Mengtian module. Mengtian was designed almost entirely around science throughput, a dedicated cargo airlock for moving experiments outside specialized facilities for microgravity research, additional experiment racks, and external payload adapters. As with Wentian, Mengtian initially docked at a forward port. Then came the moment that marked the end of basic assembly. In November 2022, using robotic arms and automated procedures, both laboratory modules were relocated to their final positions, forming Tiangong's now familiar T-shaped configuration. At this point, the timeline is clear. What isn't always clear is why it unfolded this way. Because speed like this doesn't come from a single breakthrough. It comes from design choices. And there are four that matter most. 1. Design philosophy. Tiangong's modules were modular, but they were also self-contained. Each one arrived, fully wired, fully plumbed, fully functional. By contrast, many international space station modules were delivered as partial systems, requiring astronauts to connect cables, install equipment, and integrate systems during assembly. Tiangong avoided that entirely. No in-orbit wiring marathons, no prolonged activation phases. If a module reached orbit, it was already ready to work. 2. Robotics first. 
From the beginning, Tiangong was designed to be assembled by machines. The station uses a 10-meter primary robotic arm on Tianhe, smaller, highly precise manipulators on the laboratory modules, automated docking and relocation procedures. These systems allowed entire modules to be captured, moved, and berthed without astronauts manually guiding every step. The ISS pioneered space robotics, Tiangong built around them. 3. Late Mover Advantage Tiangong benefits from being decades newer. Its systems reflect that. Modern avionics, wireless internal networks, compact life support hardware, digitized inventory, and control systems. The ISS is an extraordinary machine, but much of it was designed in the 1990s, with technology constraints that no longer apply. Tiangong didn't need to retrofit modern ideas. It was designed with them from the start. 4. Political Simplicity Finally, there's governance. The ISS required consensus between NASA, Roscosmos, ESA, JAXA, CSA. Every major decision involved international coordination, budget cycles, and political negotiation. Tiangong is managed by one nation under a single long-term plan. That doesn't make it better, it makes it faster. The ISS remains larger, heavier, and more internationally integrated, but when it comes to execution speed, Tiangong represents a fundamentally different approach, one optimized for efficiency, not consensus. When Tiangong reached its final three-module configuration in November 2022, that wasn't the end of the story. It was the beginning of normal operations. Since then, Tiangong has been continuously inhabited, typically by a three-person crew, with rotations occurring roughly every six months. This is an important distinction. Early space stations were experimental. Crewed missions were short. Presence was intermittent. Tiangong has already moved beyond that phase. Crew overlap missions, where one crew hands over directly to the next, have become routine. Long-duration stays are no longer record-setting events. They're standard procedure. In other words, China isn't testing whether it can live in orbit anymore. It's practicing how to stay there indefinitely. At the same time, Tiangong has begun opening up, carefully, to the rest of the world. Through cooperation with United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs, China has hosted international scientific payloads from more than a dozen countries, allowing researchers access to microgravity experiments without direct crewed involvement. Then came a more symbolic step. In 2025, China signed an agreement with Pakistan to train and fly a Pakistani astronaut to Tiangong, marking the first time a non-Chinese astronaut is expected to visit the station. It's a limited partnership. It's tightly controlled, but it signals intent. And that intent becomes clearer when you look at what China has quietly prepared next. Chinese officials and state media have acknowledged plans for a multi-port docking adapter designed to attach to the existing station and dramatically increase the number of available docking locations. That single addition would make it possible to add new modules, host more visiting spacecraft, expand scientific capacity. There's also a detail that rarely gets mentioned. China built two copies of the Tianhe core module, one for flight and one as a backup. That spare hasn't been discarded, and while no official launch date has been announced, its existence makes one thing clear. Tiangong was never designed to remain frozen in its current form. 